Well, this didn't take long. Let me show you what I'm holding in my hand. This is a letter that is written by and signed by 1,100 CEOs here in America. It is written to Donald Trump. Look at how long it is with all the signatures. Letter's only one page. 1,100 of these CEOs signing this letter. They are congratulating the president-elect. But then in the letter, they are formally requesting that he work to begin healing and reconciliation with all of America. Right now, we have the guy who right now is advising those companies on how to reconcile with the Trump presidency themselves. Ernst & Young, global chairman and CEO Mark Weinberger, here in a Fox Business exclusive. I'm sure that you represent and you work with a lot of the companies that are on this list, Mark, but what are you telling CEOs in the wake of this brand new victory by Donald Trump? Well, Liz, it is a time for healing. It is a time for the company, country to come together. And business has a huge role to play here. I mean, we've got to go up and advocate for our positions. We've got to talk about what's important to create growth in America. We've got to help identify people who can serve in the, in the uh, White House and the, and the 4,000 appointments that are going to happen over the next 100 days or so. Uh, we need to figure out how we can work with the administration and Congress to try and finally get legislation through that's going to help create jobs and grow the country. What are you, you know, I guess what I want to know is what are they most worried about? What do you hear when you speak to all of these CEOs? Well, first of all, you know, the CEOs, along with almost every other major institution, have lost a lot of trust. And what we, if we better have learned lessons from Brexit. We better have learned lessons from this election that it's got to be about inclusive growth, bringing everybody along, creating jobs, creating opportunity for all, not just focusing on a few. And so, the business community is willing to come up and, and advocate for our positions, but we must obviously not lose sight of the fact that we have to work with every vested interest. And so when we're looking at tax reform, when we're looking at uh, energy reform, when we're looking at opportunities for infrastructure, we've got to figure out and help the government figure out how to do it right. And so that okay. means coming up with, with ideas, not just asks. Right. Well, Mark, a lot of those things are, are really being embraced by the business community, but what about the punitive tariffs that Donald Trump has said he would impose on any American company that moves operations overseas. You know, he references Carrier and he references Ford very often. Well, today, General Motors just laid off 2,000 people. We have the auto stocks all moving lower on, on some fear that Donald Trump will start uh, punishing them with tariffs if they move some plants overseas. Well, first of all, what Donald Trump is focused on is growth, and that's going to be important. Now, we're moving from the election season to the governing season. So now we've got to get Congress to work with the president. The, the House Republicans have put together a very comprehensive plan on tax reform that talks about lower rates, a more competitive international system that will help companies compete and hire people here in the United States. And that's what it's really all about. Okay, but it's also about, um, uh, let's get to tax cuts. He has said that he would implement the largest tax cuts since Ronald Reagan. But, you know, Mark, the nonpartisan tax policy estimates that his tax plan would add $6.2 trillion over 10 years to the federal debt. Uh, how do you and CEO square that? Well, first of all, I think we would agree that uh, tax reform uh, has to be fiscally responsible. We can't just uh, blow up the debt. Uh, with a whole new spending programs, whether it's on infrastructure and tax cuts and everything else, because that has its own major negative ramifications for interest rates, for investment, for long-term stability of the country. So we have to work with offsetting some of the tax cuts with other uh, elimination of credits and incentives. We also have to look for spending cuts to offset some of the tax cuts. We've got to look for pro-growth tax cuts that will create jobs that will provide more revenue to the government. So all of these things, Liz, are going to be on the table. It's very early in the process. Uh, first of all, they have to get people in place who can begin negotiating. Gotcha. We're ready. we got ideas. We want to go up and talk to the administration, and that's what we're looking forward to. Boy, it's so nice to see you, Mark. I'm sure you're a very busy guy. Your phone's ringing off the hook. You've got operations in 150 countries. So, yes, there are all kinds of interests to discuss. Thanks so much for taking time out to be with us exclusively. Always here. great to talk to you, Liz. <laughs>